Yes, so we are here today to show how quickly a Christmas tree will burn if ignited. And so we're going to talk about safety, things to do to prevent this from happening in your home, and other holiday tips to make sure that everyone has a safe and enjoyable holiday. What are some of those uh, safety tips? Yes, so uh, we want to make sure that our trees are at least three feet from any heat sources like electric heaters, baseboard heaters, wall heaters, um, fireplaces, any candles. We prefer that you use battery operated candles. Make sure that your tree is watered every day. Um, also keep in mind that having your tree in the same room as a wood burning fireplace can burn the... Sorry, we rewind. Uh, keep in mind that having your Christmas tree in the same room as a wood burning fireplace will dry the tree out a lot quicker. So the farther you can keep it from a fireplace, the better. Typically about 10 feet is best to keep it from drying out. And then once the leaves or the needles start to fall, we want to make sure that we stop using the tree inside and move it outside. And then also recycle it or uh, turn it in when it's, when it's done. We don't want to burn our Christmas trees in the fireplace in our homes. Uh, can, uh, is it important to check the uh, lights and wires? Oh yes, thank you. So yes, another thing that we want to remember is making sure that we're checking the uh, Christmas tree lights as well. Make sure that there's no exposed wires or frayed wires and any that are kind of malfunctioning, we want to replace those. Why is it so important that we're here today? Do you think that people maybe don't grasp just how dangerous having this tree is? Yes. So the importance of us being here today is a lot of people don't understand how quickly Christmas trees will burn if they're ignited. I think you'll be surprised to see how quickly it will go up. And as it is, we only have about two minutes to escape if we have a house fire. And this really reduces that, that time frame as it is because that tree is going to go up a lot quicker. And so that's another reminder of how important it is to have working smoke alarms and also carbon monoxide alarms. What about uh, the importance to keep it away from heat sources? Yes. So. Uh, it's very important to make sure that we keep any live Christmas tree away from um, any heaters at least three feet away. Candles um, with the heaters, that's electric heaters, baseboard heaters, cadet heaters. Um, even your uh, heat vents can help dry the tree out quicker, so just keep that in mind. Make sure your tree's not right over a heat vent. Uh, We don't, fortunately we haven't had a lot. We had a large one a few years ago that did require some rescue. Um, nationally, there's only about 160 a year, but they result in about $12 million in damage a year. And then, ooh, sorry. With um, artificial trees, so any newer tree that's sold in the United States, those are required to come with flame resistance or flame retardant, so those are a recommended alternative as well. When talking about disposing of the trees, what, what are uh, some tips on how to properly do that? Stefan, do you have any tips on this? Sorry. Like the recycling for the, the trees? She said recycling services. Yeah, is there any more than that? Yes, okay. <clears throat> when it comes time to get rid of your tree for the season, uh, we recommend coordinating with the recycling service to get rid of the tree. We really want to make sure that we are not burning that tree in our fireplace at home or even in a fire pit out back because the trees do go up so quickly. Can these, uh, some of these fires, can they be, uh, can they cause, uh, you know, maybe you can speak to how they can cause property damage and could even be deadly? Yes, so with these trees going up so quickly, our homes have a lot of um, synthetic materials inside so that those materials will burn very, very quickly as it is. And then having this kind of rapid ignition of a Christmas tree will create flashover a lot quicker. Flashover is basically a whole room and contents fire. And even firefighters can't survive in a flashover condition. Um, flashover is over 1,200 degrees and up to 2,000 degrees. So that's very deadly when you think about people trying to escape out of their family homes. And that's also why keeping the trees away from our exits, if possible, is recommended um, and making sure that the wor you have working smoke alarms so that people can have early warning if there is signs of a fire and people can have enough time to escape. 
So when we see this go, we'll all learn and understand better how you cannot stop a tree in a Christmas tree once it's burning. It's almost impossible to stop, right? Yes, great point. So yes, once this does ignite, you'll see that even a fire extinguisher is not going to be helpful on these. They're too, too fast burning and too hot, and really you just have to get out at that point. And then this is, these fire, these trees have a lot of potential energy that when they, they burn, that's why we're talking about this, because they are dangerous with so much energy in a dried out tree. Yes. <laughs> you want me to elaborate on this to me? Yes. People don't understand how dangerous it, it potentially it is having a tree in your house. Yes, you definitely. And when you think about how these trees are typically kind of the the height of the room that's going to spread that tree or that fire directly to the ceiling a lot quicker than something that's starting maybe at the ground level. Right now there's just a small ignition from something like a candle or a heater that has ignited the combustible materials near the tree. And fire doubles in size every 30 to 60 seconds. Yes. In our homes, we typically have a lot more combustible materials nearby from our flooring materials to curtains and things on the wall that are also going to catch more quickly. So in less than 30 seconds, we had flames to the top of the tree. If this was inside somebody's home, those flames would be at the top of their ceiling and spreading everything nearby on fire as well, like your couch, 
um, curtains, any other combustible materials that you have within your living room or wherever your tree is kept. the tree falling over like that, it's going to catch even more things on fire that haven't already ignited if it was inside a room where the Christmas tree was kept. That was less than two minutes and the whole tree burned down. Yeah, it was about, <clears throat> okay. um, yes. Okay. Your time, what did that show you? So by the time, okay, uh, when it fell over, it was about a minute and a half. Um, from the time the tree ignited and then got up to the top, it was less than 30 seconds. There's no stopping that, is there? No, definitely not. And this tree was cut about three weeks ago. So, as far as a Christmas tree fire specifically, I'm not always aware of the of the cause when I'm when I'm fighting a fire. So it's going to be the same standard approach I think that we use for for all of our kind of room and contents fires. I understand that you like personally have not fought a Christmas tree fire in a home park, but have you seen similar fires in your experience? Absolutely. So as I think we saw, this, the heat release rate from that um, would catch like a couch on fire or anything that's a synthetic material. And typically we have between six to eight minutes to put out a fire of that magnitude before the house gets untenable and unsafe. So on an engine, we always have four people. That's kind of the first arriving unit. Um, and then on a first alarm house fire, we typically have four fire engines, a truck, a chief, and an ambulance that all respond. Can things escalate pretty quickly uh, since the fire goes up pretty quickly? Ab absolutely. Yep. Can you talk about like, what, what types of scenarios um, may you encounter in a situation like that? Um, so anything from kind of what like Stephanie was talking about with flashover. Right, so the fire, as we witness, just kind of slowly building and building until it really takes off. And once that kind of flashover point gets reached, there really isn't any any stopping it. Um, so if we're if we're inside of that, and that all of a sudden decides to ignite, like that's going to be kind of a problem for us, right? Would you say that you're uh, probably your biggest obstacle to fire? Just the amount of heat, yeah. So what about safety? somebody does see their house on fire what do you want to tell them i'm sorry their tree on fire what do you want to tell them get out as quickly as you can and call 911 call us don't even try to put it out no right? don't try to put it out you want to talk more about just 
any house fire where your house is on fire, should they try to put it out or it's just best? It, it really is best. I think just general house fire kind of tips and tricks. If you're, something is on fire in your home, call, you know, get out of your home, make sure everyone is out of your home, have a plan in place before that happens with your family. You know, I have three very young children at home. And even though, you know, the oldest one's three, but he knows to go meet us at the mailbox outside of our house if something were to happen. Um, so having that plan in place before is absolutely key. And then, yeah, if it's something to the point where you have to call us, get out, call 911 and let us handle it. We just watched this tree burn up very, very quickly. Was there any point in that entire process from when you lit it to when you stepped back that we could have stood a chance to fight that fire or? I mean, maybe in the very beginning, right? Like if you if you caught it right in the very beginning where it was just that present burning and you had a quick access to a fire extinguisher and could hit it then, yes. But it took, I think Stephanie was saying 30 seconds, right? Before it kind of got to the core of that tree and you saw just how much heat got released from that. So it, it really is best to just get outside, be safe and call us. Would you personally, because um, you mentioned you had a family, would you personally feel safe bringing a tree into your home with the right precautions or would you opt for a fake tree to be safer? I do feel safe. I mean, I know I have everything in place and I've talked about it with my family. Um, and I think as long as you have all the right precautions in place and you're not having all, this, all of the items that Stephanie mentioned, right? Like an open candle next to your tree or a fireplace really close, um, I, I would feel safe, yeah. What makes you so flammable? Is it the tree themselves or the combination of the decorations on the tree? It, it really is a combination of a lot of different factors from how dry the tree is. So that's why keeping it watered is really important. Uh, if it's really warm in the room, like Stephanie was mentioning with that fireplace and it, dry, it dries the tree out a lot quicker. And once those pine needles get dry, you saw how fast it just went up.